Hey there, what's up, and welcome to another episode on the Hardcore World. Today, I want to get right into things. I've been doing some resource gathering off a of camera. Oops, I meant, did I do that with my shears? I guess I did. Um, I've been doing some resource gathering uh, off camera and also did a little bit of building that we're gonna take a look at here in a second via time lapse. Um, but what I'd like to do today, today's like main focus is going to be on getting some enchanting going. Now I've talked to you briefly in the past episodes about getting enchanting going uh, and, and or how we want that to look. Uh, we could do it in a variety of ways. But I think the way that I would like to go about getting our main enchantments would be from librarian villagers. And what I'd like to do just for a temporary setup on our enchanting station area is to push this back. Actually, let's in fact get rid of this so we kind of can get a glimpse as to what I'm meaning. Um, so I want to get a enchanting station set up with obviously all the correct amount of books and all that and I don't think we can get that the way this is set up now I think I'd have to set some up here and or here and I don't want to block this all off so what I think I'd like to do is alter this just a hair and make it so this entire section here is kind of pushed back and this is right where this block is um, and then we will be able to have a full setup for enchanting without taking up space in here and making it kind of feel strange. Uh, and I think that'll be good. So this will go there and then we'll have the books and stuff around it. And I think overall it'll feel better. And so this is gonna be our temporary enchanting area that's in our house. But eventually I would like to make some thing, some form of enchanting station that is a villager based house uh, that is separated from where like our librarians are and i think that would be cool but we're gonna work on this today to get this just set up so we can get some enchanted gear um and then yeah i mainly want the enchanting to come from villagers anyways so we're gonna be getting books and all that stuff so to start things off we're going to get right into building and do a little bit of a time lapse and I'm gonna try and make it quick because the whole focus of today is getting our villagers all set up and our enchanting station in the basement set up. So we're gonna go ahead and start building a little bit of a librarian area, library, and then I'll be back and we can kind of go over it a little bit more. <music> So did quite a bit of work as you saw. Don't know how long that time lapse is going to be, honestly. Not really planning that much. I knew I just wanted to get the build in for the most part until uh, we can get some glass, which I do have now, which we can put up there eventually. Um, but here is the library. I'm really quite happy with how this has turned out. I think it fits right in to the builds. I don't think it stands out too crazily from the typical villager building. Like it, it looks fairly normal to me, I think. Uh, did add in a little bit of difference every now and again um, to the base being stone brick, just to add a little bit more structure to it. Uh, and then I also added, threw in a tower of granite just to add a little bit of interest to the other, otherwise like not remarkable shape. Um, and then added a few side sections just to give it a little bit of interest. Uh, it kind of also looks a bit schoolhousey if that makes sense, but hopefully when we add the glass up there and make like a glass dome, it'll feel a little bit more library-y. Uh, I did go ahead and do a good amount of the interior 
Now, none of the bookshelves are in because I don't have any leather to make books or anything like that, but here's what it looks like on the inside. Uh, we are gonna have two floors. This is gonna be like the main area where all the books are gonna be, and upstairs is where you would go to read them. It is also much, will be much brighter once that is glass and letting light through. But for right now, this is what we've got. Went for a very simple stone andesite gravel floor. Uh, it's trimmed by an uh, polished andesite. I think that looks nice. Uh, I think we'll have like a little reading nook right here as well, just because this is, I don't know, I don't think we need to put bookshelves here. I think having a little reading nook behind some shelves in, with like privacy is nice. Um, and then we do have a side entrance here, which is going to be, I think, oh, hello, Mr. Gollum. Uh, you are looking a bit rough, honestly. Um, but we are gonna have a little side garden here. I think it's gonna be barred off from the pathway. And so it's kind of a private area where uh, eventually I think it's gonna come all the way around here. I think I'm gonna raise all of this up by one block so that there, there is a, a sm very teeny tiny cliff um, on into to get into this water. This water right here from that chunk on right here may go away as well uh, because I have done some defining as to where I want to continue this river once we get there. Um, so it's going to come right on through here. I've done some messing with the pens and stuff to make sure they're not totally in the way. Um, and so this is where the river will eventually be and there will be a nice uh, that will move obviously because our farms will be somewhere else. Um, and so, yeah, these guys are going to be not anywhere near here. This river is going to continue flowing on through, trying to make it a little kind of match this whole flowiness of it. So it's going to flow on through here. And so either this is going to go away or we're just going to raise everything up and there's going to be a nice waterway like pathway right here. I think we could probably keep this and it'd be fine. Who is that a cave or no? Nope. That's just interesting terrain generation. But that's what the goal for this will be. It will be a, like a nice uh, pond area. We're going to raise the water level up. Uh, and then eventually, because there is kind of this marshy land here, maybe having a little waterfall that flows down uh, and then doing something with it here. I don't know exactly what to do with the terrain on this side, but that's OK. We'll figure it out. Um, maybe we'll just connect it up and make this all on that level or on this level or something, I think. Regardless, I think it'll be good. Now, one thing is you may notice the doors are on the inside versus being on the outside. That is because I have put trap doors here, which will block villagers from going out um, and also will block zombies from coming in, at least from what I can tell. If not, then we'll do something to make that happen. Uh, but essentially, I want all our library villagers to live in here. Uh, so we will have, I did put a lectern uh, so we can get our first one. Um, and so we're going to have a lectern and then maybe two more lecterns uh, down there. Uh, and then their beds will be up here acting as benches. So we're going to have one, two, and then a third one over here somewhere. Uh, and I think overall that'll look nice and will be functional in a sense, uh, but will also be their bed. Uh, and so I would like to get the glass in, but... First, what we should do is get our first villager in. I think that would be nice. So I need to go make a boat. And then there's two villagers in here that we could honestly, if I can gather up some more leather, we could make both of them. Well, I don't know what that guy is. I think he is the Fletcher. So I may break his table, make him nobody, and then we'll make both of these guys librarians. Um, and as you did see, I did tear down two houses here. Uh, so we will definitely have to rebuild them somehow, uh, but I didn't think it mattered that much because the houses generally this is in a five this is in like the typical five by five sort of villager structure um, building style except for the middle section is a seven by seven, um, but overall still very very vanilla Minecraft very simplistic of a build. So let me go ahead get those guys moved in here and then we'll maybe begin the process or well i don't know we can do that together you know if there's anything i've learned while building things like this uh, in this series particularly uh it's that honestly building smaller sometimes 
is really, really nice compared to what you sometimes get stuck into. Like sometimes you get stuck building. Also, that was really easy. This dude literally walked over and came in here. And now he's in here. All right. Uh, there we go. And uh, now we have our villagers. So that's good. And are you going to run away? You can't. You're blocked. Ha ha. Um, so the... Well, this was actually way easier. I don't even know what to talk about now. Um, but one thing I found that is really nice about this series, and I think the reason why I've been really enjoying just playing in this world, is because everything's just simpler. I'm trying to keep things much easier, uh, much simpler, and not going like, hey, we're making cool things, of course. Like, I, I do really like both of these builds. But they're not over the top. They're not insane. And I think sometimes we get you can get stuck on this whole concept of building really big and awesome things and that's just not necessary in a lot of cases like it just really isn't necessary um i am wholeheartedly into building like really massive things i think it's super fun but i also know that we don't need to all the time like this is just almost as cool of a build because of how simple it is and how quick it was to build like this usually builds that i do for a video take a multitude of hours like more than this took me two hours to do and I th that's not that bad honestly i didn't have a plan going in or anything i just kind of just winged it for being a two hour build not bad very happy with it so now that these two are in, um, I guess we just kind of, I'm going to go get some more leather and then I guess we just wait until they give us decent trades and uh, that'll be good. I, I, I think that'll be really nice. So let me go ahead and do a bunch of lectern breaking until we get two villagers that are worth keeping and maybe I'll bring a third person on in here as well. Yeah, you can't fit through there, bud. You can't fit through there. I promise. All right, brief intermission here. So I ended up getting four or three villagers and then I accidentally slapped one. So he's just gonna chill in a boat there. Um, and that's gonna be good, I think. Um, so we have these villagers here. These are our mending peeps. Um, there's one guy down here who has an a silk touch for eight emeralds. That is nice, probably about the cheapest I could find it. How am I gonna do this like that? And then, and then, and, and, and uh, well, I don't know what happened to this trap door. I think he legit stole it. I think it's in his inventory. Um, yeah, I don't know. Updating the block doesn't do anything, so I don't know. But we've got other people up here. I've been blocking them from coming up here because I don't want them all roaming around. Um, this guy has mending for 20 emeralds, uh, and then this guy has efficiency four for 27 emeralds. And so we're going to get another, um, oh, I have it in my hand now. That's weird. Okay. Uh, how about you get down there? Yeah, get down there. Good boy. Good boy. So we're going to have, uh, probably one or two more in here. I can't decide how many I actually want to have in here. Um, and then I'm gonna, I need to get some emeralds uh, actually trading and of course still need to do glass. Um, but I realized uh, in order for us to do much trading for emeralds, we need paper. Oh, a kitty. Hello, cat. There's been a few of them that have actually spawned. Um, we need emeralds. Uh, and I realized also uh, to get emeralds from them, we need paper. So today may be more about getting a automatic sugarcane farm that is pretty basic uh, set up. And the best place to do that, and I've already started it, is down here. Decided to change it around and make this our automatic sugarcane farm. Um, and we can go ahead and finish it out together. Uh, I figured we'll do that. And it's going to be fairly simple. Um, you just got sugarcane down, uh, down here, and then they will grow up and make those uh, observers go off and they'll send a redstone pulse. There will be pistons that are on this second layer. We'll run redstone on top of them and then that'll be it. Uh, yep, that's, that's really about it. So let me make all of this stuff. 
One key thing I forgot. You definitely need iron to uh, to make pistons. Oh, this isn't even gonna go there. What am I doing? This is gonna go right here. And then we'll run redstone on a block, I guess, right here. And it should power all of these. And it should be fine, honestly. I th or at least it should power the ones right next to it. I don't know how it works exactly. I'm just gonna make it so that one of these powers all of this section. Uh, so we'll have them be semi-automated based on each one. But I, I, don't, I just don't wanna make a lot of these because we don't have a lot of resources. But I realized I need iron. And uh, that is how much iron I had. I had one ingot. I can make another and that's about it. So bear with me. I need to go and uh, mine up some iron and then, then we can actually get into this. So let me go ahead and do that real quick and I'll be back. All right, that should be good. I'm gonna go ahead and make some dinner and I'm gonna AFK here and see how efficient, if it's any good. Yeah, I guess we'll see if it's any good and we'll just, yeah. This kind of worries me that that is already floating there, but I imagine this is not gonna be a lossless farm, especially, well, there's not a sugar cane growing there, I suppose, but you know what, that's okay. I guess a piston doesn't need to be there either. Well, whatever. We are not redstone professionals, so that's okay. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead, AFK a bit, and we can just kind of see what happens. All right, y'all, so some weird things have happened uh, as we, well, not weird, just some, some time has passed. As you know, last week, no video. Sorry about that. That was last week was the final week of the last quarter of the fiscal year for my job. And that's generally just when it gets really busy. And so just took the time to make sure that I was on top of everything there for work, as that is my, you know, main source of income. Um, and yeah, so it's kind of taken away from being able to build here. Of course, I start recording when the sun goes down, but that's all right. We are safe up here. Uh, well, for now, until the sun goes down. As you can see, finished the dome and stuff off. Honestly, don't remember the last place that I left off. Um, and so this episode is probably going to end a little shorter than normal, and it's going to be a little kind of cliffhangery, I guess, uh, because as you can see, Finally, another trader came by and I uh, got to trade for more jungle saplings. So we have two big old jungle trees right there. Really nice. You can see a nice box laid out. That is for next episode. Going to be making a cool enchanting place on top of a maybe another thing. But we've had some strange things happen, particularly here. Uh, so firstly, want to say really love this build. I'm really happy with it. I think it looks pretty cool. Um, but we have three traders in here uh, currently, uh, three librarian trading peeps, and oh, let me in. And um, well, originally we had what was it? Silk Touch. Uh, we had Fortune Three, and we had Efficiency Five, and that was really awesome. Well, currently we have Efficiency Four. Um, so apparently I've been doing a lot of AFKing because in our house over there. In the basement, we made a sugarcane farm, which has been improved slightly. Um, and, uh, well, I did a lot of AFKing, literally like two to three days and nights straight in real life of AFKing. And I guess uh, the a lightning rod, also this looks very cool. This is why I did like a tower type thing. I think this looks really, really cool, especially with the plants up here. I think it just, oh, it just adds a nice aesthetic and it's all well lit and I think it's really nice. But I had the beds here and I'm guessing lightning struck the roof and caused one of our villagers, the efficiency five, actually no, we had mending, we had mending. That's who it was. You weren't even efficiency, we had mending and the mending villager is who got yoinked into being a witch because of the lightning strike. And for some reason, I just didn't even comprehend it. I didn't even think that lightning would, if, even if it did strike the roof, I didn't think that it, it would like register. I, I kind of thought maybe it would be smart enough to know this is a roof that it's striking and so it wouldn't like, you know, affect the blocks around it. But I guess Minecraft isn't that smart. Um, also during the Eye of King, all of the iron golems have um, <clears throat> been vanquished. 
Uh, this was their station. I really just needed a little bit of terracotta to finish off the sides. And so I turned that house into, ter into a cobblestone house and stole some terracotta from here. But I was hoping to be able to do the inside of that before the end of today's episode, but I don't think I'm gonna be able to do that. Main reason why is it requires a lot of bookshelves. And as you can see, uh, we don't have that many cows to be able to do that. I'm working on that, but eventually we'll get there. Um, what I would like to do instead is get enchanting set up. I like it. That's kind of the goal of having these these peeps is to be able to have enchanted gear and get like mending was the primary thing. Ironically, mending is no longer a thing. Um, because of that and that weird setback, uh, I just decided to while instead of just straight AFKing, I've been doing a little bit of work uh, here and expanding this cliff area a bit making this all on one level. I don't know what's gonna go over here, but I liked the idea of putting our enchanting over here in a, an interesting build that I just planned out yesterday. That I think it's gonna be really, really fun. Uh, and you, you can see, I do have some books here. We have, I think, nine, so we need six more books. Uh, and so I'm gonna continue breeding up them cows there to be able to make enough books, to be able to make enough bookshelves to finish this out, to get level 30 enchanting going. Uh, and then I may try and find one villager to be able to make one mending trade. Uh, but if not, I may not do that. I may save that, just kind of do it off camera because we already have been through that process because I have changed up how this works. So you can go up here and then there are stairs here to be able to get down. And so I'm thinking this is this entire cliff section up here is going to be like primarily my access area for just me so we're going to continue the cliffs around to connect up to the mountains so they can't actually get up i thought that could be fun just because i don't know planes are plain and uh, should be decorated out a bit uh, and so i think that is uh, a nice thing a nice change also many more raiders have uh, happened upon me while i've been here uh, so that's not fun but if you go down here, the sugarcane farm has definitely, I don't remember what it looked like before, but it's definitely been changed. Ran out of iron, but I have been AFKing for quite a bit. I just recently did a trading haul uh, of all of the paper that had been accumulated uh, to get emeralds to be able to trade for those jungle trees. So they are all gone, but I do have this back area. Uh, that is going to be a second portion to the uh, farm because we do have a minecart that runs underneath all of it. I just don't have all the pistons and stuff. And so all of these are going to fire at the same time as the front ones because they're using the same redstone line, which is on these cobblestone blocks. And it just makes for a nice, simple way of getting sugarcane very very simply and you can see there's the minecart and yeah this is just way more efficient than the water i was doing the water just made honestly no sense and while we're here we can grab that and go there um yeah it just didn't make that much sense to do the water we were not it, it was not lossless whatsoever it was actually losing quite a bit uh, i also had a uh, like a really big scare with uh the pi zombie pigment accidentally slapped one and they kept building up here so i literally had to like vacate this house because i i was nearly dying but that's enough blabbing for me let me go ahead breed up some cows then we can finally get into a little bit of enchanting get some diamond gear finally going that's going to be all good and then yeah, I think that'll ha that'll that'll be where we end it off because I, I honestly don't know what else is going to be going on with this. Anybody else? No. Awesome. So let me go ahead, slaughter these guys up, get some bookshelves made, and I'll be back. All righty, y'all. I got all the books done. Uh, many cows have been murderized, and we have their children still over there. So they will be murderized as well because we're going to need bookshelves for the next build we do next episode which I do have to say is going to be quite epic. I do think it's gonna be really cool because I'm starting to get an idea as to kind of what I want to do to this area. And it's a little bit more than just a village overhaul, um, but we'll get into that more next episode. I don't wanna get into it now. Let's focus on getting our equipment enchanted. Now, I already accidentally enchanted my pickaxe without actually you know, putting a uh, anything but unbreaking on it. That's okay. We can get fortune or silk touch or whatever from a villager via a book. Um, so that's not that big of a deal. But what I did see is what's nice is 
we can get Silk Touch right here on our shovel. And I think that is just handy dandy. So what we're gonna do now, you know what? Maybe what we should do is actually grab ourselves a new shovel. That could be good because I do have a mending book, but I think I want to put that on my pickaxe. And making a new shovel is not that big of a deal considering the fact that it costs one diamond. Not that big of a deal. So we're gonna go ahead and do that, do that, and get silk touch, is that it? Nice, efficiency for unbreaking three silk touch. That's beautiful. So that's a beautiful shovel. Now, what else is there? Unbreaking three, okay. Uh, I'm assuming I have a wooden pickaxe in here. Let's grab the book as well. Let's see if we can get anything else. What is the sword? Nothing. The swords have been garbage. It's been really bad. Unbreaking three, I would rather efficiency be there. This is also gonna be unbreaking three, so that kind of stinks. I think what I'm gonna do is go ahead and do the level one enchantment and then disenchant and then go gather up some crops or or uh, smelt something or kill the rest of those cows that just now all grew up at the same time uh, and then hopefully be able to get one more level because uh, I'm hoping now fortune three that is actually <laughs> really good uh, let's see what the sword is bane of arthropods I've gotten bane of arthropods four probably five times now in terms of like seeing it when I'm look comparing it to like other things. Ooh, efficiency four on a book. We could just make this an immediate efficiency five. Huh. But I think we can trade for efficiency four. So I don't really care actually that much about that. And then this is fortune three on a pick on a regular axe. I would rather have silk touch. So I think what we are going to do is maybe get another level and then round up some experience to be able to enchant this pickaxe to be a fortune pickaxe. That was a bit of a struggle. Cooked up a good amount of food to get those levels, but now we can get fortune three, and that's really nice. Now, the only, the only problem I'm having is currently I have a fortune three book that I traded for. So we can always have that as a backup. I also have a Silk Touch book that I traded for and a Mending book, but I have literally zero arm, uh, iron. Um, so can't really do anything. So I am, I think, going to take this for now and keep that book as a backup. This is now a, a really nice pickaxe and really, yeah, happy with that. Efficiency four, fortune three. Like we, we are able to make this a nearly perfect pickaxe actually a perfect one because we can get efficiency four from over there and then just kind of go with it now let's see what else can we be enchanting for unbreaking three again man it's been really liking the unbreaking threes sharpness four not bad so i think i'm gonna go ahead and do the level one enchants because I mean, might as well. This is going to take two. Le I, I could do this, I guess. Respiration one probably is all right. This is protection two, projectile protection two. That's not that bad. Um, fire protection, protection two. And then is it this that I need? Depth strider one, fire protection. Honestly, I think I'm going to do projectile protection for the one cost because, I mean, might as well. This is going to be unbreaking, unbreaking, and then this is going to be unbreaking and unbreaking. Okie dokie. We'll do the eight level and fire protection. Not bad. All right. And then this is unbreaking, unbreaking. We'll do the unbreaking and that's it. So we have enchanted gear. It doesn't give us much help, but it will help us fare a little bit better and, um, yeah, I think that's going to have to do it for this episode, guys, because I just need to go get a bunch of resources. I need to go get some iron in our mine. I need to go potentially caving. Uh, need to just get a little bit more in the ways of resources because, yeah, we're just running out of stuff. So I hope you guys enjoy this episode. I know it's a bit kind of scatterbrained because of, 
you know, just missing a week and all that, but hopefully we'll be able to get back on track. Um, I'm looking forward to the build we're doing next episode because I have actually a decent amount of pl it planned out and I think it's going to look really, really cool. I have, and it's kind of cool because it's going to evolve slightly over time. It depends on if we can get piglin trading, which I think is a bit s potentially sketchy to do, uh, in a hardcore world, but you might, might as well. I mean, I think it'd be fun. So I have a really cool idea for that. Let's go ahead and put this, uh, lapis away and then we might as well just throw those in there for good measure and yeah i so i think that's gonna have to do it for this episode guys and uh in between episodes or next episode right at the beginning we will decorate out the very interior of that the and it shouldn't be that much it's just minor decoration um and yeah i'll try and do some resource gathering so we're in a good spot for the next episode and then look forward to this because this is going to be like our primary focus i think for the next episode because it's a little resource intensive and it requires a little bit of uh some sketchy resources to go gathering but i think it's going to be worth it it's going to be really cool and i'm really excited for it. it's nothing i've actually ever really built so i think it's going to be fun but thank you guys so much for watching, and I'm really glad you guys are enjoying this series. If you have watched up until now, feel free to leave a like in real life on the video. It is very helpful for the YouTube algorithm, of course. For any of you who are watching and are not subscribed, it would be lovely to have you here a part of the channel. Um, and just go ahead and hit that subscribe button and slap the bell and all that stuff. You know the shindig. You've heard other YouTubers. And uh, that's going to do it. So thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next episode. Uh, bye bye.